Hey guys, long time no see, right? I know. I have been battling with some health issues um, that I would rather have not had um, that has prevented me from sewing. I had both my hands were acting up. Um, I had pain in this one for a straight four weeks. Um, so when Stacey and I went to our um, annual visit of Nashville back in March, um, I think I overdid it with my clients before I left and then <sighs> driving six hours, then all weekend, then I helped take out the braids, then I drove back six hours and then I came back on a Monday night on Tuesday morning. I had four pedicures with people over six feet tall, so they got real heavy legs. I'm just saying. And it was just like... It also was Easter week that week as well. So it was just like back-to-back -back clients. And my hand was on fire for a month. Yeah. That wasn't the only issue that I was having. But that was the, the most major issue that I had. Um, that was preventing me from sewing. Because I could barely even work. Like literally when I would come home from work every night I was crying. Because his hand was hurting so bad. But anyway. Here I am. Hi guys, I'm going to be showing you the outfit that I am doing for my one day assembly this weekend. It is Thursday night. I have not started on this outfit, but ask me how long that I've had this pattern and this fabric. I'll wait. I've had it for months, both of them. I've had both the pattern and the fabric for months. Is that not pitiful? Well, anyway... As you can see from the title, um, we are going to be doing a Vintage Vogue pattern. This is the Jerry Silverman 2193 pattern. And some of you, if you're avid sewers, you have seen this dress done recently by Mimi G back in the holiday season 2017. She did it in either November or December. Um, I've been trying to get my hands on this pattern for years and I have never been able to get it in my size. This is not my size. This is a 12, um, which means that it is two sizes too small. It is for a bust 34, a waist 26 and a half. I ain't never had no 26 and a half inch waist. <laughs> I have had a bust 34, but not for a few years now. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking that this is not going to be an issue as far as sizing because the fabric that I'm going to be using is actually a stretch fabric. And the dress is actually not tight if you look at it. Um, the There's a tie here in the front. That tie is built onto the dress. So the waistline is not tight. And as you can see, we've got some back cowl action going on here. It's very drapey in the front area. The sleeves are drapey. You know I would love to do the long to the floor version length of this, but it is springtime and finally <laughs> the weather is above 8, 70 degrees. And the, the fabric that I chose may be a little bit too hot for this weekend, but this is what I wanted to do since last year. So this is what I'm doing. I don't care. I'm just going to have to sweat. I'm going to be cute though. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing the shorter version of it. Um, Mimi G did hers in a gold satin or maybe possibly a silk because she probably got it like that. She could probably get any fabric that she wants to from, I think it's Michael Levine. One of these days when I get out there to California, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to open up another credit card. Okay, we are already four and a half minutes into this video and I'm just doing a whole... We haven't seen each other. Can I talk to you for a second? Anyway, <laughs> this is the pattern that I'm going to be doing, the short version of this. This is so feminine and beautiful and you know I like a little flowy and gown-like. The fabric that I've chosen to do it in was a holiday fabric from Joann's. Um, it is a winter silver crushed velvet now I am not a fan of velvet I'm not and I know that this is the trend right now 
Um, I bought a velvet crisscross top from what well, was supposed to be a dress, but I wear it as a tunic. I bought it from Forever 21 on clearance and I hate it. It's olive colored and I hate that thing. It fits horribly and it's just, it's not, it's probably going to end up in the Goodwill pile. But gray is my favorite color. So there is nothing I can do about it. Uh, <laughs> there are some other items that I may have been able to make for this assembly that will be more springtime-ish. But again, this is what I've been wanting to make for months now. And this is what I'm going with. This is what my heart is set on. So I'm going to be doing it in this uh, stretch velvet. And as you can see, even if it is a size 12 dress, <laughs> it's going to fit, okay? Now, hopefully I don't cut it on this green because it's not stretching. But if I cut it on this one, I got some stretch action. So I'm excited. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I need to get started on this. It doesn't seem like a very difficult pattern to do. I read over the instructions the other day and it doesn't seem that difficult because there really aren't that many pieces. There are seven pieces to the dress. There's not too many. Double pieces either. Everything is basically on the fold. The back is on the fold. Well, no, the back is not on the fold. The front's on the yeah, front's on the fold. The back's on the fold. One waistband. The back neck facing is on the fold. The front neck facing is on the fold. The pockets are the only thing that I'm going to cut four of, and I might not do pockets because <laughs> the last couple flowy dresses that I did with pockets especially stretch dresses, they didn't do so well with pockets. So I may mix that. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem like too difficult to pattern. The um, instructions are really big and lots of these steps can be combined. Like there's lots of like reinforcement stuff on here. Reinforcing clips. And then this is the second page of the instructions. Again, the illustrations are pretty big and it's lots of just reinforcing. And then there's no third page. So I'm not, I'm not concerned with this. Um, I am installing cuffs on some men's pants for a brother in my congregation. So I need to get on that as well as uh, fixing a couple of his wife's outfits, his wife's outfits for her. So I'm going to do that first, then I'm going to do this. But I've got between today, tomorrow night, and Saturday night to get this done. I have some ideas for what I want to do with my hair. But depending on the weather, every, listen, every time that I want to go to the springtime assembly, it's always humid. And if I flat iron my hair, by the time I come home, it's a mini afro, and I don't appreciate that. All that work that it takes for me to put heat on my hair, and it be fuzzed up. So, but I'm not flat ironing my hair. That's not even an option. I'm going strong with the flat iron. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think our assembly last year was either May 5th, 6th, or 7th. So, once I make it past this weekend, it'll be a full year without me flat ironing my hair, which... I'm fine with because I got that one little section over here that had the heat damage and I was not feeling that, okay? But that's a, that's a subject for another video. I'm sorry. This is nine minutes of me rambling. Don't y'all miss me? I miss y'all. If you've never been here on my, my channel before and you got this far and you don't like my talking, um, just hit that thumbs down and go find somebody else's channel to watch. <laughs> anyway, this is the <laughs> this is the pattern and this is the fabric. Here is my finished dress.
Alright, so this is my finished outfit and I absolutely love it for so many reasons. Um, the biggest reason that I love this dress is because it's in my favorite color. The second reason why I love this dress so much is because it was so easy to do. OMG. I think um, from start to finish, it may have been eight hours worth of work. Um, and I'm talking about from cutting it out to finishing it. Um, so this pattern, if it's one that you have in your stash that you bought from eBay or you found it at a thrift store or you've got it in your wish list somewhere online, you need to get this pattern. This pattern is going to be great for beginners to advanced sewists. Um, you can't go wrong with this pattern. And it doesn't necessarily look like an easy pattern, but it is. And it does have quite a few um, instructions on the pattern to do, but they're all super, super sim simple. Um, for a beginner sewer, this would be the pattern that you will want to do to take it up to the next notch, um, to like intermediate with your um, garment sewing. Uh, so let me tell you how awesome this, this dress is. So yesterday was Saturday. In the morning, I got up at like 7, 7.30 um, to start cutting it out. I don't think that I cut it out until maybe like 8 o'clock because I initially did not anticipate um, changing the color of this waistband um, tie. I was going to make the dress out of the entire velvet material, but if you've worked with velvet before or if you have not worked with velvet, the one thing that you will learn is that um, it has a lot of bulk in it. Now this velvet is very lightweight. This was from the Casa collection, the Eventide, um, for the holiday fabric back in um, 2017. So I got it at a dirt cheap price, I think. I think I'm going to pay 8 or $9 a yard for it. And I got quite a bit of it. I may have gotten the whole rest of the bolt. So I actually have more than a little bit of a yard left. So I can make me like a little shrug for when I'm wearing um, sleeveless stuff or a tank top or camp saw. But that's either here or there. This fabric is super, super lightweight. So even though it is warm outside, it's like 75 degrees, like I'm not sweating and I don't feel hot or anything like that. It just looks like it's heavy, but it's not. Um, so I think I start cutting the pattern out probably between 7.45 and 8 o'clock. Um, and I had to go find this fabric. This fabric that is the waistband and also the facings on my dress that you can't see is remnant fabric from one of the dresses I did last summer for a convention. The really, really long gray, um, uh, oh, what's the, what's that style called? Uh, Art Deco dress. That was my Sunday dress that I wore with the turban. This is some leftover remnant fabric. So this is like a um, medium gray charmeuse. Because I wanted to kind of break up the dress because like I think I told you guys before I really don't like velvet but gray is my favorite color so I could not pass this up <laughs> I could not pass it up so I had to go find this which is why it took me so long between the time that I woke up and started cutting stuff out and then I pinned stuff together and I did not I mean I left <laughs> oh excuse me I had a woodworking class down in Cincinnati so I cut out everything. I had to go find this fabric somewhere in my stash. Cut everything out. And I had to kind of like figure out how long I wanted the dress because again, I'm only 5'2". On the model, the dress always looks longer. Uh, or I'm sorry, on the model, it always looks shorter. On me, it's always longer. And with this particular pattern, you can only use 60 inch wide fabric. And this fabric was 60 inches wide. But there, where you had to cut this front piece on the fold to where the sleeve is, it's wider than 60 inches. Well, it's wider than 30 inches. So maybe this fabric was a 58 inch fabric because it was, it was a little short. Luckily though, um, where the sleeve stopped was right on the selvage and I had to turn the selvage in in order to 
encased the elastic, so it was no big deal. But you definitely cannot do this on 45 inch fabric unless you have a lot of it and you're gonna cut it on the uh, bias or maybe you're gonna open it up and cut it, um, instead of cutting it lengthwise, you cut it grain-wise. Well, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, because I've never really figured out which one was which. I just follow what the pattern says. If the arrow goes this way, that's how we cut it. But, um, so yeah, I started cutting out the pattern earlier in the day. Then I left. I went to Cincinnati. I did a woodworking class. Then I shopped in Cincinnati. Then I had to drive back home, which is 45 minutes. Then I went to the salon and did my nails, which took three hours. And so I got home at about 8 o'clock. So from 8 o'clock until 1.15 is when I actually started to construct the dress. And it was, it was so easy. I'm telling you guys, it's ridiculous how easy this dress was. Even though um, one of the threads that I was using that matched the color of the dress, it, the thread for some reason kept getting caught on the its own like bobbin thing. Not on my machine, but the the plastic piece that holds it. It was a sewology thread. I've usually never had any problems out of sewology thread. So I had to ditch that and put the Pokes and Clark on. And after that, everything ran like butter. But I kept running into the, the thread breaking on my machine because for some reason that thread was poorly wound by the manufacturer. But other than that, I had no issues sewing this dress. Um, I did have to do quite a bit of hand stitching with the um, facing. The facing right here on the front is completely hand stitched to the front of the dress, but you can't see it because your girl did a good job. <laughs> um, it's just, it's a timeless dress and I am going to definitely do this again. This is going into one of my top favorite of all time patterns. These vintage bow patterns, y'all, cannot go wrong with you. You can't go wrong. So I did do the shorter version. I didn't end up cutting any length off of the dress. I cannot wait to do this dress in the really long floor length version. Um, I just have so many good things to say about this dress. I absolutely love it. The only thing that I don't like about the dress, and I told you guys that I wasn't going to do it, but I did it anyway, is I installed pockets. And I think the pockets are too shallow for this dress. So you would need to create another pocket for it if you have this dress and you actually want to utilize your pockets because it's literally big enough for half a peppermint to put in this pocket. Like I can't even get my hand in there. So I should have just left it off because I literally, until I started spinning to show you guys the dress, I forgot that I even put pockets on it. So if that's saying anything, just don't even do the pockets. If you want to do the pockets, draw them deeper so that you can actually use them and they'll be functional but um i think that the cowl on the dress is a very modest cowl um for the back um this is about as much back as i want to show at any bible assembly um it just it's lovely the only other thing that i would change about the dress is these sleeves um it's not really meant to be worn down here. You can if you want to, but it's gonna pull open the back of the dress. So I wore them above my elbow. The problem with wearing them above your elbow is the instructions tells you to measure your wrist and then cut the elastic an inch larger than your wrist measurement. But if you wear it up here, your circulation is gonna get cut off. And while I was at the assembly taking notes, I'm just like, my arm is killing me. It feels like my blood vessels were breaking. That's because this is too tight up here on my bicep instead of being down here on my wrist. And there was no adjustment for the sleeves um, on the pattern. They literally only come this length for the long dress or the short dress. Because again, you cannot get a piece of fabric any bigger to make the sleeves longer. Because this whole front piece is cut on the fold and it's 30 inches so yeah um but other than that that's the only thing that i would go in and fix is i would take the elastic out and make it like two inches bigger so that it doesn't cut off my circulation because that was painful isn't this lovely 
the uh, the cowl is actually a separate piece of fabric from the dress. It's attached to the dress, but I could actually lift it up over my head, which is how the instructions tells you to put the dress on once you finished it. Um, and there's supposed to be a zipper here in the back of the dress, underneath of the cowl. Let me, let me just show y'all. So under the cowl, there's supposed to be a zipper in the dress right here. Uh, I eliminated that because who wants to install a zipper if they don't have to? <laughs> so I got rid of it and the dress is very, very wide and stretchy. Um, you have to put a casing on the inside of the dress and then put elastic in it. So the dress is actually really, really wide. So like I said, I didn't think that I was going to have any issues with it being a size 12 and I didn't. I probably could have done a size 8 for this pattern and been just fine. Um, I do like the way that it fits over the bust though, so size 12 is probably the right size for me. But uh, if you work with knit fabrics um, and it calls for a zipper, I always eliminate the zipper out of the pattern. Um, and the back is actually supposed to be two separate pieces, but like I've told you guys before, I don't really care for um, center seams on garments and I will try to eliminate that everywhere that I can. So while the back is supposed to be two separate pieces, I cut it on the fold, did not insert a zipper, and that's what made the dress so easy to um, do. I just, I love this pattern. I'm so sad that it took me so many years to get a hold of it, and I actually spent more on this one than I wanted to, but after I saw Mimi G make it, I was like, why am I still waiting on getting this pattern? Just get the pattern. So that is it. Um, I hope you guys like my dress. I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. I, um, I'm kind of digging this uh, crushed velvet. I have seen at uh, Joann's their spring collection, they have a baby blue crushed velvet and they have a baby pink crushed velvet. So you might see other projects from me in the future with velvet. I like pastel colors. I think toned down would be nice. There is one other Mimi G project that I want to do one of her patterns in a velvet, but I gotta order it from online and it's expensive. So <laughs> that's far, far in the future. I've got plenty of other things that I need to be working on, such as my convention outfits, because the conventions are less than two months away and I am so excited. So, this is it. I hope you enjoyed. I am so sorry that I've been gone for so long. I just have not been feeling very good, you guys. I got everything checked out. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to get my life together. I know we all say that so, so, so very much, but I, I really need to get my life together. <laughs> um, as far as me uh, eating better and being more active and working out and stuff. Other than that, I'm doing great, but yeah, your girl hasn't been feeling very good. <laughs> so that's where I've been. I, it's not that I'm neglecting you guys. I just have not been able to make anything because I just, my hands were not working and that was scary because I really didn't want to have carpal tunnel and, and it resolved itself. So I'm okay now. But, alright, so you shall see more of me more often, especially now that we're in the summer convention season. Alright, my lovelies, I will see y'all later.